Prairie Sportsman's logo features the iconic cattail that is abundant in Minnesota's wetlands. Where there are cattails, there are waterfowl, or so we thought. The native broadleaf cattails that have dotted our wetlands are being replaced by invasive narrowleaf cattails that are choking our wetlands, and in some cases, making them uninhabitable for ducks. It's sort of a, a double whammy. We've lost a lot of wetland acreage across the state, and then the wetlands that are left are not always in the greatest condition. And whether that's water quality or invasive species like cattail, you know, it, what we have left is not always in the best, in the best shape. The broadleaf cattail, it likes a little bit different habitat than the narrowleaf cattail does. And so, um, for example, it's not as tolerant to big fluctuations or deeper water levels. It's got a narrower kind of happy zone for how deep the water can be, where our hybrid and the narrowleaf cattail, is, it can, it's compatible with a much bigger range of, of water depth conditions. And so it can persist in places where that broadleaf just couldn't before. Because it grows so aggressively and so quickly, it can really overtake all the native vegetation that we would have had in those wetland basins. Um, the new leaves grow really fast and really vigorously, but the old dead stuff doesn't decay very fast. It takes a long time to decay under, in, down in the bottom there. And so you end up having this real buildup of, of litter, we call it, or that duff layer gets built up and built up and built up and it can actually completely shade out the whole area so that nothing else has a chance to grow in there. They use a lot of water and they do a lot of what we call evapotranspiration. So water evaporates just from the surface of the pond, but then water also leaves a pond by going through the plant um, and getting transpired through the plant. Because of that thick root layer, duff layer that's in there and because it's taking up water so much faster, um, we can end up having wetlands that end up getting dry a lot sooner in the season than they would normally. Plants that would have been in the spot where that narrowleaf cattail is growing are things like hard stem bulrush, soft stem bulrush, some of the others, some of the broadleaf sedge plants that we would have had in there. So yeah, definitely replacing some of the native, native wetland plants. What that means in the end is that all of the different kinds of birds and other kinds of wildlife and you know, for us ducks we're concerned about, they evolved with that original vegetation that was there. They like to have more sparse vegetation where they can swim in between stems of plants, for example. And when you get that really thick duff matted up layer growing in there, essentially it's taking away habitat from, from waterfall. Where did all these invasive cattails come from? The botanists are always kind of arguing about this kind of stuff. Um, so they, they think that it originally came from Europe um, and, and then it sure showed up first in the United States in the eastern part of the country um, and then just really slowly over time moved its way west. It didn't really show up here probably until the mid, middle part of the 1900s. So um, you know, if we talked to our grandparents about it, they wouldn't really remember seeing this much cattail in wetlands. That would have been different than what they would have seen in, so, you know, example in the 30s and 40s. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife's Morris Wetland Management District is working to control narrowleaf cattails and a hybrid cross between native and exotic species. So we've done some targeted timing on burning and grazing, for example, doing it more in the fall when the water levels are lower, hoping we'll get a bigger effect on the cattails at that time. We do things like spraying the cattail with an herbicide. It's a um, Roundup. There's an aquatic version of Roundup called Rodeo and so they'll just go out and directly spray that either with a helicopter or with um, an amphibious vehicle like a Marshmaster. Um, we also will sometimes go out and actually scrape the cattail biomass right out of the wetland if it gets really over choked. That works well in, in the shallower basins where it's just more of a seasonal type wetland and it's gonna dry up later in the fall and allow us to get in there with heavy equipment and just push all that stuff right out of the basin. Typically the, um, the ideal time to start to control cattail in those more direct ways are um, like late summer, um, kind of right when it's flowering, it's used up all of its reserves of, of energy that it stores in the roots underground or you know down in the soil over the winter. Um, and so if you can do something to go in and control it at that time, it's the most effective because it doesn't have as much of a chance to recover from that treatment that you do. If we're doing our best, we really have to prioritize where we target some of these activities and we really try to focus on areas that we know are important for waterfowl especially. So that's how we decide where we're going to spend our, our energy and our funds on cattail management. To show us what duck habitat should look like, 
Sarah took us to a restored wetland near Morris. So this is a wetland that we would classify as a seasonal wetland basin, and that means that it, in a typical year, is gonna have standing water in it for maybe about half of the summer, um, and then dry up towards the end of the summer. We've had a lot of rain, so there's some water in here now, but um, these, when you're talking about waterfall breeding, these wetlands, these seasonal wetlands are really important for pear habitat. They tend to be a little bit more shallow, and so they thaw out the earliest in the spring. And so when a pair of ducks show up from their southern breeding grounds and they're flying across looking for a place to set up a home range for breeding that season, what they're really typically keying in on is how many of these seasonal wetlands are in that landscape. And for those of us that like to strap on camel in the fall, restored wetlands mean more ducks and more enjoyment in the field.